man. What? <laughs> hey guys, what's going on? Today we're going to do something, well, a little bit different. We're going to make something together. We're going to see if it works. I, well, I think like everybody, love cheeseburgers. Cheeseburgers are amazing. They're fantastic. They're one of the world's most perfect foods. But there seems to be a camp of division here. There are the people who like the smashed cheeseburger, and there are people who like the big, fat, juicy cheeseburger. And the reality is I love them both, and I don't know which one I think is better. I think I kind of like each one for different reasons. So the idea came to me, can we find a way to have the best of both worlds? Can we get that crunchy, ultra caramelized exterior of the patty, but still have a little bit of size to it, still have a little bit of juiciness to it? Maybe it's still cooked closer to medium on the inside. And so you know what? Today we're gonna work on that. We're gonna see if we can make that happen, and hopefully, by the time this video is done, we're gonna have a fantastic cheeseburger. So, let's get started. Now, obviously the main ingredient to any cheeseburger is the burger, it's the beef. And the truth is I don't love store-bought ground beef. It, I don't know, it weirds me out for some reason. Maybe I just like using my grinder, I don't know, but there is one thing about store-bought ground beef that I think is kind of problematic, and it's something called myosin. It's one of the proteins, sort of, or structural protein, that makes up ground meat. Think of it as like strands of fibers with little sort of spiky things on it, and that's not, not, not important. What is important is that it is the reason why meat that has been ground multiple times, like pretty much all store-bought ground beef, is tough. And so, inevitably, using pre-ground beef will make a chewier burger. And I don't want that. I want one that, again, has a really intense caramelization, but I want the inside to hold all of that natural moisture. I want it to be really ultra tender. So we are going to grind our own beef. And we're going to use two different cuts of beef. Now, right now, the trendy thing that exists is a patty that's a blend of chuck and short rib and brisket. And all the kind of hyped up burger places are using something that's pretty similar to that. Now, I'm gonna do my own version of that, but I've excluded brisket. And there's a reason for that. The first is that when you go to the grocery store to buy brisket, you can only buy a ton of brisket. And the second is that, frankly, post COVID, people really got into making barbecue at home and the prices of briskets have gone through the roof. So we're excluding them today and we are going to keep just Chuck and short rib, which is what I have right here. Chuck and short rib. They're both relatively inexpensive cuts and they're both relatively available. The other plus here is that these two cuts are something that comes in smaller packages. You don't have to buy 10 pounds of each of them like you would a brisket. You can get a pound. And so that's what I have here. I have a little bit under a pound of each of these. It's the same amount in weight of each. Now, the other caveat that I want to add to you is that this is two different types of beef. So this is an American Wagyu beef, which is why it has so much marbling to it. And that fat is going to be fantastic for this burger. It's going to make it really juicy. It's going to make it really flavorful. And it's going to help produce a ton of caramelization when that fat renders out. But the truth is the meat itself, the flesh, is a little bit on the bland side compared to grass-fed beef, which is what I have next to me here. This is grass-fed beef raised in Georgia, processed in Georgia, one of my absolute favorites, White Oak Pastures, and that's what I have right here. Now, you'll notice that it doesn't have very much fat in it, and that's the tricky part with it, is that it makes a very healthy burger, but frankly, burgers with a lot of fat inevitably taste a little bit better. So, we are going to grind grass-fed beef and Wagyu beef together, and hopefully we're going to create the perfect patty. So, Let's grab our grinder out of the freezer. And by the way, if you haven't watched the video on making meatballs, go back and watch that one because it really walks you through the process of why everything has to be super cold for it to work properly. So if you get a chance, watch that one, especially before we move on to this next step. But I'm going to grab my grinder out of the freezer and we're going to set up to grind our beef. All right, guys, I have my grinder. It's just kind of sitting over here for a second. I'll move it into frame in a moment. I have a sheet tray beside me as well, and this one's cold. It came straight from the refrigerator. And I have my meat, which again, came straight from the refrigerator. So everything is nice and cold. Now, before I run this to the grinder, I wanna try something here as well. Today's recipe is very much something that we're doing together, and we're hoping the results come out the way we want it to. So I'm gonna cut this meat up into kind of cubes and just set it over here on my sheet tray. But the thing that I wanna try that's a little bit different 
And this is a technique that I use in the meatballs, and I think it should work in the burgers as well, which is what would happen if we season the cubes of meat before we grind them? In a meatball, it works great because it distributes the seasoning evenly throughout the meat. And I think that would be a great technique here. Now, if we were gonna grind a ton of meat and let it sit, that would be a really bad idea because that salt would end up desiccating or curing the meat like you do salami. But in this scenario, that's not the case. We're gonna cook this as soon as we grind it. So I wanna try that today and see how it comes out. So I'm dicing up my meat into cubes that are big enough to run through my grinder. There's really no, this is not a specific size. This has more to do with which one you're gonna use. And I'm just gonna use a KitchenAid grinder. So they have to be, you know, not huge. Kind of one inch chunk seems to be just fine. So give that a dice here. And then over to our sheet tray, swap that out. And then let's take our kosher salt as always. And I'm not measuring this guys, I'm just doing a big pinch because if we were seasoning burgers, we wouldn't measure it, we would just season it all over. So nice big pinch over it. And then let's do some black pepper too because I for one, Love black pepper when it's mixed into beef. I think those are kind of, I don't put pepper on everything, but I certainly put it on beef, whether it be a steak or a burger. So let's give that a little bit of a mix up here. And let's run it through our grinder. So slide that over. All right, guys, we have our grinder. Got our little plunger deal here. This is our KitchenAid grinder. Obviously the KitchenAid is kind of sitting a little bit off camera here. I'm not gonna talk while I'm grinding this because it's noisy and there's no point, but we're gonna turn this thing on full speed and we're gonna run these through. And I'm just gonna run them right back onto this sheet tray that I have in front of me right here. There's no reason to get multiple things dirty. And there's also a good reason that we're using a sheet tray. So let's pass them through. And by the way, let's just actually, let's look at this real quick. So this grinder has multiple attachments. I'm actually glad I did this because I had them both. So you have multiple dies. There's a smaller one and there's a coarser one. For me, hamburgers, I always run on the coarser die. I don't like a really smoothly ground burger. It's just a matter of personal preference. You may feel differently, but again, I'm trying to cut down on the amount of protein bonds here. I want this to be looser so that we have a more tender burger. So I'm gonna run it one time through the coarse grind. So let's go. Three. There's our meat. Let me slide this out of the way. All right, guys, this is our ground meat. One thing I should call out while I was doing that is that I was purposely grabbing a mix of the two as I was grinding it so that I didn't have to really work this all in together. Does that make sense? I took some of the fattier meat and some of the lean meat and I'd kind of go in, not literally one cube and then another, but I was trying to make sure it was evenly distributed so that we have this look where it's pretty even looking marbling. Now, the other thing I know is that since I started with about, you know, I don't know, pound and a half actually, I don't think it was quite two pounds of meat here, I certainly have enough for four generous patties. And so I'm going to go ahead and kind of separate my meat out into roughly the same size piles here. And I don't care if they're perfect. This is for home. If this was a restaurant, I'd have to be a lot more careful in ensuring that they were all the same size, but that's not the case here. So I have four piles of ground beef, and this is still fairly cold, but it's not as cold as I want it to be because the friction of the grinder warms it up. So I'm gonna pop it back in the fridge for about five minutes before I shape it into my patty. So I'll be back in just a second. This stuff right here in the pan that's hard for you to see on camera, beef fat, rendered beef fat, specifically roasted beef fat. This is the key to the flavor that we all love so much. I mean, when you get that smashed burger, yes, the crunch is beautiful, but one of the reasons that we all like it so much is the flavor that comes from beef fat being subjected to high heat. It gets this just incredibly savory, intense flavor profile. And for this burger, we're not going to cook it as aggressively because we want to retain some of that interior. So what can we do? We can start it with roasted beef fat. So I took the bones from my leftover short ribs, popped them in a 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes, 
and I have loads of fat. I'm going to pour that down on my griddle before I add my patty, and I think that's going to help us achieve the color that we're looking for. So, speaking of, I'm going to be using my flat top griddle. My range here has a big giant flat top like you could cook pancakes or something on. I'm going to use it to make my burgers. If you don't have something like that at home, it's no big deal. I would 100% tell you that this dish would be great in a frying pan. So bust out that big giant cast iron skillet that I'm sure you have at home somewhere and let's use that. I have my flat top heated to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, which by the way, on your home range, if you're using a cast iron pan, that's gonna be medium high. So I'm gonna move the camera so you guys get a better view of the flat top and we're gonna cook this burger, see what happens. All right guys, we're going on with some of our beef fat. A nice little puddle of it right here, about the size of a half dollar. Then we have our patty, which looks beautiful. Look at this, nice coarse marbling. And all I've done is just kind of shape it into a cylinder, but it's not even by any means, and you'll see why. Let's drop it right in the center of this beef fat. And then I immediately am going to use something to smash it down. I'm using a steak weight. But unlike a normal smash burger, I'm only pushing this thing down about halfway. You can see we still have a nice patty right there. So let's leave it and we'll come back and look at this in about two minutes. Okay, it's been two minutes, give or take. Let's pull our little weight off. Okay, set that aside, and then let's flip this thing over and see what it looks like. Oh man, I don't know if you guys can see that. Look at the color on that thing, it's absolutely beautiful. Let's go look. Beautiful, nice, deep caramelization in this thing. That's what we want. Beautiful color. Let's go ahead and put our cheese on it. These are nice, big, thick slices of cheese, so I actually think one is going to be plenty. All right, our cheese has been on for 30 seconds or so. It's nice and melted. Let's move this off over here onto our rack, and we'll let it rest. Okay guys, our burger is resting. Now you noticed I had a little metal rack there on the griddle. It's because that will keep it warm, but it also will let the meat rest. And remember, if we cook meat, if it's a steak, if it's a burger, it doesn't really matter. We have to let it sit for a second so all the juices stay in place. So while that's happening, let's toast the bun. Grab my bun here. Let's grab a little, grab our butter and a little, little offset spatula will work good for spreading this on. Now, I love a good toasted, buttered bun for a burger because I just think the texture is way better. But also, in this scenario, that butter on the bread, I think, really helps round out the flavor in this, which is already kind of rich and fatty because it's a burger. So let's throw that on our flat top as well. Now we get into the great debate condiments and toppings. My favorites are really simple. Mayo, mustard, pickles, and onions. If you want bacon on your burger or an egg or cheddar cheese or God forbid ketchup, which will hurt my heart, you know what? It's your burger. Go ahead. Put whatever, whatever you want on it. There's really no wrong answer, though I will have a hard time admitting ketchup is the right answer, but the point is this is where the customization comes into play. Where I think it's important is the technique of cooking the meat. That is, at the end of the day, what a burger is all about. It's about that piece of meat. So we pour a lot of energy into that component of it. And everything else is kind of, well, it's the garnish, as it were. If, this is a, if we're thinking of this as plated food, it's the garnish. So let's grab our bun. Let's assemble our burger. We'll cut it in half and see what it looks like.
it. <laughs> All right, guys, this is our burger. Look at this thing. It's absolutely beautiful. We have this ridiculous deep brown crunchy caramelization, but we also still have a nice bright pink interior to it. Hey, look, if you want it cooked all the way well done, go nuts, man. You're not going to offend me. I like my burgers to have a little bit of red on the inside of them. So without further ado, let's taste it and see if this actually worked. Mmm. <laughs> I think the volume of juice running down my hands and onto this cutting board says everything that you need. This is right on. Man, you get the really deep flavor of the Smash Burger, which frankly is absolutely spectacular. My buddy Billy at NFA Burger in Atlanta makes one of the best burgers I've ever had in my life, and that's exactly what he does. That said, another one of my favorite burgers in the entire world comes from a place out in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and that thing is thick, big and thick, and it's ultra juicy on the inside. And so for me, this hybrid style, whatever we end up calling it, is kind of the best of both worlds. Is it perfect? I don't know. I don't even know that perfect is possible in the kitchen, but I gotta say, it gets pretty damn close. So guys, come back, see me again next time. We'll make something different. Until then, I'm gonna finish my cheeseburger. Y'all take care, bye.